Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today I'll be discussing about the drug Procronium. So we'll just begin with the skeletal muscle relaxants classification. So we can broadly classify the skeletal muscle relaxants into centrally acting and peripherally acting skeletal muscle relaxants. So we will have centrally acting and peripherally acting. And centrally acting, what are the common examples? So we have the diazepam drug or we have the chlorzoxazone, we have tyrocolchicoside and uh, tizanidine. So these drugs are the most common uh, drugs we use uh, for as a centrally mu skeletal muscle relaxant, whereas the peripheral skeletal muscle relaxants can be further divided into the, uh, it, these drugs either can act on the skeletal muscles directly or it can act on the neuromuscular junction. So based on that we have directly acting on the skeletal muscle includes uh, example is uh, dantrolene. Okay. So dantrolene is the uh, directly acting on the skeletal muscles whereas on the NMJ we can further divide it into depolarizing. depolarizing, non-depolarizing which is where we have uh, the rocronium drug and uh, other drugs which are not in either of these two. So uh, coming to the depolarizing drugs we have uh, the main common one we use is succinylcholine. And non depolarizing drugs we can further divide it based on the duration of action. So we have the D tubercurarin, then we have the pancuronium, we have the pipicuronium. So these drugs are basically long acting skeletal muscle relaxants. Okay. So uh, that is the long acting one. And coming to the uh, intermediate acting one, we have rocronium, atracurium, and uh, we have uh, vecuronium. So these are the common ones we use as intermediate acting drugs. Okay. So this is intermediate. Then coming to the short acting, we have just one drug which is uh, Mivacuria. So that is Mivacuria. So this is the short acting one. Okay. And uh, the others, others uh, we have botulinum toxin which does not fall in the rest of the two. Botulinum toxin. So this, this is the basic classification of the skeletal muscle relaxant, the drugs and uh, it can be given to central, peripheral and in peripheral itself it can be divided based on the site of action. Is it on the skeletal muscle or is it on the neuromuscular junction? So if it is in the neuromuscular junction, we will again classify it into depolarizing and non-depolarizing and then other drugs. So in depolarizing we have succinyl choline whereas in non-depolarizing we have we divide it again further we divide it into based on long acting intermediate acting short, short acting so long acting we have pipicuronium we have pancuronium d tubercurarin whereas in the intermediate acting one we have rocronium vecuronium and atracuria whereas short acting one we have mivacuria so hope that's clear and then and then coming to the mechanism of action <coughs> so it is basically rocronium is uh, intermediate acting uh, uh, per, uh, skeletal muscle relaxant which is peripherally acting skeletal muscle relaxant which is uh, a non depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. Okay. So the name itself is a non depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. So the um, rocronium binds to the acetylcholine receptors at the motor end plate and uh, once it binds uh, to the motor end plate, so once rocronium binds to the motor end plate what happens is the acetylcholine released from the presynaptic vesicles will not be able to bind to the acetylcholine receptor site. So the uh, receptor which it binds to is called nicotinic 
cholinergic receptor. So the nicotinic cholinergic receptor is where the rocronin binds and prevents the binding of acetylcholine to that receptor and hence the actions of acetylcholine which is the skeletal muscle contraction does not take place. So what happens is this leads to basically flaccid paralysis. So in, uh, new, uh, in non depolarizing neuromuscular blocker we have direct flaccid paralysis but, but in case of uh, depolarizing blocker initially we have a fasciculation phase and followed by that there will be flaccid paralysis. Okay, so uh, that is the mechanism of action. Next coming to the onset. So onset uh, it's, it's a rap, it has a rapid onset of action. So it takes around 45 seconds to 3 minutes for its onset of action and it is actually dose dependent. So the higher the dose the more faster rapid will be the onset of action. So it is dose dependent. Okay. And uh, coming to the duration. So how long will it act? It acts around 20 to 120 minutes. So it is an intermediate acting skeletal muscle relaxant. And then we have talked about the onset duration then how is the metabolism or the pharmacokinetics. So basically uh, rocronium is uh, excreted 60 percentage via bile and uh, 40 percentage via urine. So uh, if there is any hepatic or renal dysfunction then it is uh, better to use uh, instead of rocronium we have another intermediate acting which is atracurium. So atracurium is basically by mechanism of elimination is basically by Hoffman degradation in the plasma itself. So the Hoffman degradation is how atracurium gets eliminated. So uh, in patients who have uh, the hepatic or the renal dysfunction then it is better to give atracurium. Okay, so that is the basic metabolism and uh, then coming so uh, coming to the uses or the indications where is it required. So in a emergency setting we use it most commonly for rapid sequence intubation. Okay. So in uh, rapid sequence intubation we it has it is favorable because of its rapid onset of action and also the duration of action is around 20 to 120 minutes. So it is mainly used for the uh, most commonly used for rapid sequence intubation. In other uh, settings also we can use it as in uh, if there is any ventilator dyssynchrony that is the patient ventilator dyssynchrony is there we can use it to uh, improve the tidal volumes. So it is used in mechanical ventilation. We can uh, use here uh, as an infusion as well as uh, or as a intermittent bolus doses in mechanical ventilation and also uh, in conditions like ARDS if there is any moderate to severe ARDS in those conditions also we can use uh, rocronium and also the other one uh, is the uh, shivering shivering from therapeutic hypothermia from therapeutic hypothermia in that condition also it helps to relax the muscles. So there is uh, basically uh, use for rapid sequence intubation then it is used for ventilator dyssynchrony or as in uh, mechanical ventilation and uh, also in other like conditions like uh, raised ICP in those patients uh, we will uh, we want the patient to be uh, not to be agitated. So in those cases also we can use this skeletal muscle relaxant and then in shivering cases also uh, due to the uh, therapeutic hypothermia also we can uh, use it and also it is used for general anesthesia as well. So these are the main uses and uh, or indications for uh, usage of rocronium and coming to the dosing. So dosing is it is basically 0.6 to 1 mg per kg. So that, that is the uh, basic uh, dosing which we use for uh, rapid sequence intubation or giving intermittent boluses in uh, mechanical ventilation. So that is the dose we use. So uh, it is actually uh, comes in a ampule of 5 ml, 5 ml ampule. 
So 5 ml will have 50 mg of rocuronium. So 1 ml will have around 10 mg. So we will calculate uh, the dose based on the patient's weight and uh, we will give accordingly. So if a patient is uh, 50 kg uh, weight uh, then we can give around 1 ampule which is 50 mg we can give as IV dosing. So it is given by IV undiluted as a bolus. So then other one which we have is a uh, infusion dosing which is uh, 3 to 8 mics per kg per kg per minute. So this is the uh, infusion dosing and uh, but it is not commonly used uh, the infusion dosage is not commonly used what we give is usually intermittent boluses okay and uh, what are the uh, like the precaution we have to be aware of while gi before giving rocuronium we should make sure the patient is given the pre treatment and the sedation before giving the uh, skeletal muscle relaxant so the precautions we have to take is that there should be advocate analgesia and sedation before administration of this drug. So uh, this is the recommended, uh, it is recommended usually to give after sedation and analgesia. Okay. So then coming to the um, complications, so like every other drug it can cause allergic reactions or hypersensitivity reactions, anaphylaxis and all can occur. So if there is any uh, known allergies to any other neuromuscular blockers or rocuronin then we should avoid giving it to that patient. And then other thing is uh, it is also uh, the issue is that if the patient is on steroids, if the patient is on steroids the issue is that it can cause uh, prolonged paralysis. So uh, extubating the patient might also be uh, difficult in those circumstances and also if you give a high dose uh, rocuronium it can also be uh, acting as a vag vagolytic. So vagolytic action basically causes tachycardia. So that uh, thing also we have to be aware of and also in uh, deep uh, in this uh, the kind of non depolarizing block blockers usually uh, the uh, there is a histamine release. So the histamine release it can uh, lead to hypotension. So uh, the, this drug rocuronium has almost minimal to no histamine release. So there is uh, minimal effects on the BP as well. Okay. And uh, there is like also so we need to know about certain, certain factors we have to know uh, which potentiates the action of rocuronium or increases the uh, action of rocuronium. So those things we will have to be aware of. So acidosis, hypothermia. And then also uh, it can uh, get potentiated in certain conditions like myasthenia gravis. Then also with uh, other drugs also it can get uh, potentiated. So the uh, aminoglycosides. So the aminoglycosides also potentiates the action of uh, rocuronium and also the inhalational anesthetics used for the general anesthesia like sevoflurane, desflurane. All of these things can increase the uh, action of rocuronium. So that also we have to be uh, precautious before giving rocuronium. And also the storage also I have to mention the storage is basically in the refrigerator at 4 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that is the storage condition for um, rocuronium. And then we have antidotes like uh, in case uh, we are using for a short procedure like if you are using for any endoscopy. In those cases we have reversal agents to uh, if the patient is having a prolonged paralysis not coming out of the paralysis uh, then we can give antidotes. Antidotes are sugamadex. Sugamadex is actually dosage is 2 to 4 mg per kg and the action is uh, it acts within 1 to 2 minutes. So sugamadex can be given to reverse the action of rocuronium. Okay, and uh, it actually what it does is it encapsulates rocuronium and 
blocks it from acting on the receptors. So sugamidex we have to know and also we have to know about the anticholine esterases. Since what happens here is a competitive inhibition, the non depolarizing blockers has a competitive inhibition. So once we give anticholine esterases, there won't be any breakdown of acetylcholine. So the acetylcholine level starts to rise and that will competitively inhibit the erochronium and uh, we can get a reversal uh, action. So drugs like we can give neostigmine. But what we have to be careful about is when we give neostigmine, as we know, we should also be giving atropine to prevent the action, uh, to prevent the overaction on the muscarinic receptors. So that also we have to be careful. So we have to pre-administer uh, atropine and then give neostigmine for reversal of rocrony. So to sum up, basically we have discussed about the classification, how to classify uh, the skeletal muscle relaxants. Then we have learned about uh, the mechanism of action. Then we have seen about uh, the onset of action, uh, the duration of action, the, uh, and we have also seen about uh, the uh, pharmacokinetics or how the metabolism has happened. And we have seen about uh, the uses, the indications, uh, uses or indications, and we have seen about the contraindications or the complications of the drug. And uh, uh, we have seen about the, uh, the reversal agents which we can give for a crony. So hope you have understood uh, from this session. Thank you.